This episode is brought to you by toys. We wouldn't be here without them. Literally. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Till All Are One. And today we're gonna talk about the new Transformers cartoon called Earthspark. And I'm just gonna give you my thoughts on the first five episodes of the show and they are on Paramount Plus, which is where I watched them. It's a fun cartoon to check out if you're a Transformer fan. I personally have been enjoying the show so far, but I'm only at the halfway point, I'm at episode five. So I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the first five episodes. We're gonna go over some of the cast, some of my favorite characters in it, and a little bit of my hopes of where the show might go from here. All right, so if you've seen the first five episodes, we're gonna get into spoilers. If you haven't, I would say maybe tread carefully or come back after you watch the show. And if you know spoilers from episodes six to 10, please don't put them down in the comments because we're gonna make a separate video and we're gonna discuss all those episodes coming up soon after I watch them. So for this first season, we have uh, 10 episodes total and the first episode is a two-parter called Secret Legacy. So what I liked about this episode is that it kind of sets up this new world for Transformers. It follows this family that is moving from Philadelphia to this town called Witwicky, somewhere in middle America, where their mom, who used to work for the government, and she used to work with Transformers. And now she's retired and she's getting older. They're all, you know, they're all moving to a new town to kind of take a simpler life. Benny Latham, who plays the mom, whose name is Dot, uh, she is the one who is moving her family across country to settle down. She's going to be a park ranger from now on. Uh, so something that she's hoping will be a little less intense, you know, intense line of work. So she wants to just kind of relax with her family, which is Mo, her youngest daughter, and Robbie, her son. And uh, Robbie's actually voiced, I think, by two people in this show, mainly by a girl named Sydney Michaela, uh, who is really fun because I, I thought, you know, when I first saw an interview with her, I was like, oh, cool, they're kind of Bart Simpsoning this, where they have like a young lady play a young boy's voice. Um, but she does a really good job. Actually, she's a, she's really great as playing Robbie. But there's also Jacoby Swain, who I think does like a younger version of Robbie in other episodes uh, throughout the series uh, when he's like, you know, in flashback scenes and stuff when he's younger. So uh, that's just kind of cool that they have. Uh, they have a really good voice cast because between Sydney and Zion, who plays Mo, they're very fun. They're very fun characters. Uh, you know, Robbie moved to this new town. He doesn't like it there. And he wants to go back to where all of his friends are and where they're from. And he's so he's a little, um, you know, he's like a kid about it. <laughs> you know, he's uh, he doesn't really understand all the adult decisions that go into making, you know, that go into making a move like that. And so they kind of play that out right away. And then but his sister, Mo, she's kind of like, well, let's give this place a chance, you know. And so he's like, no, I'm running away. And during their time trying to run away, they run into some Transformer action. <laughs> and actually they get lost in a cave. And in the cave, a new form of Transformers are born. Uh, something creates them out of kind of like, you know, our soil and, you know, goo from our planet, um, along with Cybertronian technology. So they become known as Terrans. Uh, so they're kind of half, you know, terrestrial and half human. And so uh, Dr. Mandroid, the evil villain of the show, uh, voiced by Dietrich Bader, he names them Terrans. Uh, so he tries to kidnap them, learn about them because he's taking apart Decepticons to build himself like a mech armor so he could become a machine man, basically, kind of like an Iron Man. But he wants to use all their technology to do it and he's very nefarious at it and he has no good intentions with these evil plans of his. Uh, but in doing so, he's like brainwashing Decepticons and you got some cool ones like the Insecticons there and then some of the uh, Combaticons who form Bruticus. Uh, so that's pretty cool that they brought in some of those characters because Swindle shows up in an episode later, um, but uh, but one of his other Combaticons is in this episode and he's getting operated on and gets his arm removed. So I'm, I'm a big Bruticus fan, so I'm kind of excited to see more of that for sure. But the new Terran characters are characters named Twitch and Thrash and uh, and they actually you know scan they learn how to transform in the first episode and Twitch becomes like a drone of some type and Thrash becomes a motorcycle with a little sidecar uh, for Mo which is cool so yeah I'm, I'm liking the setup you know the first episode does a really good job of introducing uh, and reintroducing characters uh, through their father Alex voiced by John John Briones, uh, who does a great job. Actually, I think he's some of my favorite comic relief in the show. A lot of the jokes are kind of silly dad jokes and, and goofy stuff. And he's definitely someone, he's like a stay at home dad who's a chef and he takes, you know, cooking very seriously. And that's kind of his thing is he's, you know, cooking at home. He's that and a Transformers fanboy. And so when, uh, you know, he hears about the Transformers being involved, he gets super excited because like, hey, we moved to this small town and we didn't know we were going to run into Transformer action. And now Optimus Prime is showing up with Alita One talking to my wife again, 
who his wife does not seem to be a big fan of Optimus Prime. So I'm really wondering what the kind of, why, why that is. You know, she seems to be a little standoffish with him uh, for some reason. I, I guess we'll get into that as the show progresses. Uh, they hint at it a little bit, maybe that he's just, you know, he brought this, you know, attack to Earth or whatever and, and led, you know, led this war against the Decepticons, which really it's the Decepticons, but they all kind of came through a space bridge. So their father, Alex, in the first episode recaps the Transformers. And he says in September of 1984, which is around the time the first cartoon, that I think that was the exact date, was in September of 1984, uh, is when the original Transformers landed on Earth. So since 1984 all the way till now in 2022, the Transformers have been here on Earth. And there's been a lot of changes because there was a war at first, and I guess they're saying all the original cartoons are canon, but now something unique has happened. Uh, I'm going to give a spoiler away for Megatron here, but I just want to shout out this toy and the to toy line in general of EarthSpark are out there now. You can pick them up at your local toy stores. I believe Walmart and Target get them. Blue found this at Target, and it is so cool. I'm so glad he picked it up. And when he left it here, he left me a note that said, do the review and then open this thing immediately so I can check it out. And uh, he's going to watch the cartoon at some point too. So yeah, this is really neat. Like I, I just really am into this design of him. He looks really cool, and I'm glad Blue picked this up because I didn't know these were coming out so soon and I had just watched the show. I think the show's been out for a little while now, but I'm just now getting to it. So, you know, Blue, thank you for this because I will definitely do a toy review of this, but I'm just showing it off so people out there who collect the toys, if you're into this show and you want some of these figures, go get them yourself. There's a Bumblebee, there's a Megatron, obviously, there's Twitch. Uh, they didn't do Thrash in this first series. I think that's weird. Uh, Optimus Prime, Shockwave, Grimlock, and Nightshade. And if you get all seven figures, they all build Dr. Mandroid who is the villain of the show, again, voiced by Dietrich Bader. So spoiler alert for Megatron, but he is voiced by Rory McCann, and who does a great job at Megatron in this, and Megatron is an Autobot. And so I was like, okay, that is where the show hooked me in, because the beginning, I'm like, okay, it's silly fun, it's definitely made for kids, you know, and I, I can appreciate some of the dad jokes in it, maybe from Alex's character, but really it was kind of starting to lose me a little bit. And, uh, and that, cause everything seemed to be happening so fast and conveniently, but I understand writing pilots is very hard cause you got to get all the characters into a spot and then set up the arc of the first season. So I try to give a pass to some pilots cause I know from experience how hard they can be to write. Um, but with this, once they got to that hook of Megatron being an Autobot and working with Optimus Prime in Alita One, and not only that, but being Dot's former partner. So when Dot used to work in the FBI or whatever and worked with Transformers, she was partnered up with Megatron when he came over to the you know, Autobot side. So she befriended him. She was one of the first humans to give him a second chance. And I'm intrigued by that. That makes her character a little bit more interesting to me. And it certainly makes me wonder if Megatron is really on the level or if this is just a deep, deep Decepticon ploy to make everyone think he has changed but then is secretly still leading the Decepticons. Uh, but we do come into a couple episodes where he runs into Swindle and other you know, Decepticons and they won't fight him. They're like, look, even if you're an Autobot now, we're not gonna fight you. You used to rule us and lead us and there's still a respect level from, and a fear level, I think, from some of the Decepticons. But some do fight him, I think, later on, because I saw a trailer and it looked like he was fighting a couple characters that I haven't seen yet. Um, so yeah, I really I really do, though, overall, like this show. Um, Secret Legacy, setting up the characters, setting up the world, uh, connecting the kids who wear these gauntlets that tie their emotions, and connect them with the Terrans. So whenever you know Twitch and Thrash feel something, the kids are alerted about what they feel. And I thought that added a new element to it as well and, and kind of builds on the communication aspect and the fact that these two Terrans are kind of children. So in the second episode, moving in, <laughs> which was pretty cool because there's no villain in this episode. It's just a bunch of cows get out and uh, Bumblebee is you know, instructed by Optimus Prime to be the instructor, I guess, or the mentor to these two new Terrans. So he's like, look, you can all go live at your house because if we let the ghost group know and the government know, that these new life forms are here, they're gonna kidnap them. So Optimus is like, fine, you know, if you wanna take them to your house and keep them in secret, that's fine with me, but just be very careful. Um, I know I can trust you, you know, you're an agent and everything like that, and you know how to keep secrets, but we really need you to, you know, keep this one big time because we don't want anyone out there to get their hands on these Terrans. Even though the Terrans get kidnapped, 
by Dr. Mandroid in the first episode, who then the Terrans name him because he calls them Terrans. And then they go, well, then you're a Mandroid. You're a man who wants to be an android if we're a terrestrials that are humans. So, uh, you know, so they kind of did that. And he's like, I'm not Dr. Man. That's not my name. Uh, so, uh, but obviously that's going to be probably a running joke and theme throughout this series is uh, the fact that this villain isn't going to get any respect. But he is commanding an army of these like insecticon type things they almost look like quintesson heads with spider legs it's really neat so i'm really curious to see where that storyline is going to go with him but we don't see him again for the most part in the first couple episodes he's kind of set up in the first two parts and then as we get into moving in they move on to the story of the characters growing and learning from each other so the kids have the terrans and the terrans act like kids so bumblebee has to mentor them and he's struggling he you know he's like you know i'm I've been wanting, I've been in hiding all these years and I just got revealed to be alive again. You know, uh, a lot of people thought Bumblebee disappeared, including Alex, who's a big Bumblebee fan. He's a fanboy. And uh, and so he's got like Transformer comic books. And he, when he talks about the old history of the old cartoon, it's done in old school style animation from the 80s, which looks phenomenal. I thought that was a really great way to do that and to retell the story of Transformers. So you're caught up in the first episode. So here Alex is like gushing over Bumblebee and Bumblebee's put off by it. He kind of doesn't like this guy kind of sucking up to him because right now he's feeling like a failure. He's like, I, I'm, I got a promotion. I'm a, super, a supervisor now, I guess, in the Autobots. I'm, I'm like a leader and, you know, trained by Optimus. And now I'm going to be training and no one's listening to me. I'm like, how do I get everyone's respect? How do I do this? And so it's cool to see him kind of grow through episode three, trying to figure that out. But as we get to episode four, which is called House Rules, that's where the kids get grounded and uh, and then Thrash and Mo end up sneaking off and running into Swindle, who's causing trouble because he's trying to get some energon. And uh, and then so they ended up unwillingly helping him or you know, unwittingly <laughs> helping him. He kind of you know deceives them because he's a Decepticon and they end up helping him, but then they come to their senses by the end and they learn a lesson. So that's pretty much what it is. It's it's about, you know, it's a kid's show. So they're trying to whip a little bit of message in there, but I find these messages very universal, which I really like. It's like, okay, how do you become a leader? You know, what's what's it like to be a leader? And Bumblebee goes through that in the, you know, the third episode. And in this one, you know, why are rules in place? When you're a kid, why are there so many rules? It seems like adults are making rules for you all the time. Um, and which rules are worth breaking, you know, so you learn a lesson that way and what rules are, are you know, should you follow because breaking them is could lead to very bad things. So I kind of like that. I'm like, all right, these are very universal themes for a kid show. So that's very cool that they put that into, you know, this show. And then, then the final one I watched was Classified, which I think is uh, kind of ended on a cliffhanger where now Dot has, a, you know, she's following this secret agent around from Ghost who saw one of the Terrans. He saw Twitch in the woods. And so now he's hunting Twitch. And because of that, he has, uh, you know, let her in saying, hey, your ranger station, it's actually a cover. There's an elevator in the back and it leads down to a secret hideout where the Transformers are working. So it turns out, you know, we kind of orchestrated you to move here saying you're going to get a simpler job, but we're still kind of keeping you in with, you know, Ghost and working for this agency and working with the Transformers. So, uh, so she's kind of like, okay, well, I guess uh, I, you know, I took the job of the Ranger and that means I, I am connected to this now. So, and I got to keep my family safe. So I guess I'll, I'll come along. So, um, so that's what the story is in that episode where she's working with Optimus Prime kind of against, you know, she doesn't really like working with Optimus Prime. And again, I'm sure more of that's going to come out in the next episode because this one ended kind of in a cliffhanger, but she sees that Optimus has been keeping secrets and they've captured numerous Decepticons and they're keeping them down in this facility, you know, um, and they're not being well cared for. And Optimus does feel guilty about that, but he's hoping once they gather enough Decepticons, they can figure out and learn more about the Terrans. Maybe they can figure out a solution to, you know, their Energon crave and, and all these other things that are going on, you know, because obviously Transformers, like we need food, Transformers need Energon to exist. And so there's a shortage to some degree. So Optimus feels bad about what's going on, but he wants to, you know, he's trying to come up with solutions. So her seeing that he's trying to put in an effort seems to start to win her over a little bit or build some of that trust back, you know, on her side. So, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really curious. Like, you know, clearly they had a, a rocky start in this show and she's more of a fan of Megatron, but now she's starting to warm up to Prime and I wonder what that means for her relationship with Megatron later. Are they doing that because Megatron might turn bad again? I, you know, it's weird. I go like, I go back and forth when they do this with villains. Like they're currently doing this with Norman Osborn in the Spider-Man comics. But I really like it. You know, I, it doesn't redeem him for all the bad things he's done to Spider-Man in the comics. But I like that Norman is 
he's trying. He got his sins taken away by the sin eater, and now he's you know, left with nothing but guilt and, and grief. And so he's trying to do something more heroic or be better than he was, um, which isn't hard to do. He was pretty vile before. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with Megatron. But I, I like his design in this. I like it's, it's weird seeing him smile. <laughs> he still has the red eyes, um, but he's smiling and he's like cracking jokes at times. And I know some people will be like, oh, that sucks. He's supposed to be this hardcore killer. And, you know, they can't dumb him down like this and, and make him a wimp and stuff. And it's like, well, I don't see it that way. I, I, like I said, this could be a long con for him. Um, or it could be genuine, in which case there's not a lot of stories out there besides like alternate universes like Shattered Glass and stuff where Megatron is heroic. So I'm interested to see. I like seeing new stories with characters that I've been a fan of for so long. And Transformers are coming up on their 40th anniversary in like two years. So for me, I'm, you know, it's like, hey, this is cool. I don't get a lot of good guy Megatron. So let's see where this goes. Um, and so I don't think it's making him a wimp because even when he's training, he's still he's like Wolverine. He's like aggressive training. Like when they go in, X-Men go in the danger room and they have the holographic stuff uh, to fight against. That's what Megatron trains in and he's killing things left and right. So he's, he hasn't been wimped out. <laughs> uh, he's, he's definitely still Megatron uh, from a battle standpoint, but uh, just mentally he's, like I said, he's either working a long con or he's actually trying to do better and uh, either way i'm on board right now for the story to see where it goes all right so those are my thoughts on the first five episodes of transformers earth spark what do you think of the show have you watched it yet if so let me know down below what your thoughts are and we'll keep talking down there and also let me know if you're going to pick up any of these transformers earth spark toys uh, i'll definitely you know we don't have a lot of money right now i'm actually surprised blue bought this one because we were kind of tight on money he said he put it on the credit card, so that's good. It means we don't have to pay on it for a while at least. Um, but still, it's like where we're still cutting a little close. We got surgeries with Ace. We had to take him to the doctor today. So a lot of things have been going on uh, you know, here that cost money. So, uh, so we got to be smarter about it. So Blue, if you're watching this, we got to be smarter about it. Um, but for, for now, though, um, you know, with this show, at least I can watch it for free on Paramount Plus because I got a free membership for a month and then I'll probably cancel it at the end of the month. Uh, the, plenty of time to watch the last five episodes and give you guys another review very soon. So thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace. Mm -hmm.